Hello again. Well, this is the second part in the series about me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and now we're going to look at, when I first became a driving instructor, um, the route to where I am now, really, etc. As I said, I um, first um, became a driving instructor in, actually qualified in the year 2000, and I joined the AA Driving School back then. I actually stayed with the AA Driving School for six years. Um, I say six years, I actually was with them for six months, left them, wanted to set up my own school, but then realised that I actually wanted to get further qualifications. I wanted to be better than the average driving instructor. I wanted to be the best driving instructor. And my thought was, if I let the AA handle my marketing and get me pupils, etc., I could concentrate on gaining additional qualifications. And well, it worked. So I stayed with them for two then. And during that time, um, I had some major achievements. Initially, um, I started looking at my teaching, etc., etc. And um, early on, I took something called the Diamond Advanced Special Motorist Test, etc., run by the DIA. I really wanted to make sure my driving was up to scratch and very good. Um, the standard Part Two test tests your driving, but this is of a sort of a slightly higher standard. So I looked at CPD and thought, um, you know, this will do. I had already been attending seminars, workshops all over the place, DIA, ADIA, NJOC, MSA and others, etc., etc. I'm not going to go into all the small and all the nitty gritties, but um, basically there are dozens upon dozens of small courses and small things I've done. Um, at one point, I could be found at every meeting, at every presentation. I was everywhere, but no. Um, I then decided to look at something called the Diploma in Driving Instruction, and it took me a while um, because when I asked, and I remember the gentleman's name, Colin O'Connell, at one of the DIA um, workshops in Exeter, um, what's involved with the Diploma in Driving Instruction? He basically said to me, oh, what's involved, you know, um, the five two-hour written examinations where we test you on um, all elements of becoming a driving instructor, from the knowledge to the skills to um, practical teaching abilities, etc. Um, and also about the motor car. There was, there was a whole section on the, the knowing how to, uh, about how, to, how a car runs, etc., etc., which is quite interesting, really. Um, Mm. OK, so with this thought, I thought mm, this puts me off because I tell you, you know, I left school with CSEs, if anybody remembers them, and not very good ones at all. Um, and I had no formal qualifications. Um, books were something you used to prop things up with. I was not a book reader, etc., etc. No interest in reading books. Uh, yeah, give me a car manual or a manual or something. Yeah, I would do them. So I thought I'd try it. So I then spent the next year or a couple of years of studying for the DIP DI, the Diploma of Driving Instruction. Much of which was done in the back of my car when I had a people cancel or whatever. I would go up to the local car park in Tesco's and uh, get out the books and start studying. In 2005, I sat the Diploma and Driving Instruction exam. Um, you could then sit all five units over a couple of weeks or so, which I did, and I passed it. Um, I wrote and wrote and wrote for England. I filled in all the information and I passed it and I was amazed. I really was amazed and it really was a, a turning point in my life and certainly in my career where I realised that actually, David, you can learn, you can study and I thought, amazing really. And I got the bug for it, really. And then I took on further qualifications, etc. I was looking for something a bit more meaty as well to do, which has got me into thinking about becoming a um, go into teaching. And so I, I actually went to the local college and asked them about um, teacher training qualifications and things like this. And they actually recommended something called a certificate in education. I, I first of all did a classroom teaching certificate and then moved on to a certificate in education. Uh, and that was brilliant because that I was working with people who were art teachers, who were history teachers, uh, electrical um, engineering teachers, social workers, yoga teacher and a probation officer from memory. So it was quite good. And we were actually taught about teaching. And that went on. And I'm just looking down on something when I actually qualified for that then. But um, uh, 
debts uh, was, was a couple of years later anyway. Yes, in 2006, um, I actually qualified for that there. And again, I learned about learning. I learned about teaching, but I learned about learning. I learned about how I learn, and I was able to apply that to learners. I was able to think, well, people learn differently. Um, given the right motivation, anybody can learn anything. And again, I'll touch on this much later on. I, within the AA, was able to become a fleet corporate driver trainer, doing their training there, which enabled me to go out to companies to deliver fleet training courses. Very, very different to teaching learners. You know, you're going out there in somebody else's car. Could be anything from you know, BMW to the local company van or Bentleys even on occasions, etc. And you could be going out there with either a storeman or some worker or even the manager director of a company. You never knew who you were going to have. But either way, they all were people who basically most of them thought, I can drive, there's nothing wrong with my driving. Who's this guy coming to tell me how to drive? So a completely different way in how you teach. Um, you learn how to coach very well. Uh, you learn how to gain empathy and also be able to teach people. And it was completely successful. I think on 99.9% .9 of cases, I can remember one gentleman uh, uh, working for a um, company who deliver our mail who absolutely wasn't having any of it. Um, he was not going to take any of my advice. He didn't use mirrors. He didn't signal anywhere. I, no matter how much coaching I did, and I basically ended up with him telling me, look, it's my business where I go. Um, and nobody else's but mine, so I'm not going to signal. And I've not used my mirrors in 30 years, so I'm not about to start now. Um, and it was a really unsuccessful session. But that, that was about it there. Um, then moved on to AA instructor training, started teaching the instructors, etc. Uh, and went on there, which is really, really interesting, because again, now I realise I was teaching, teaching. But again, even back then, I was thinking, this is a bit strange. We, we seem to be teaching people by rote, by teaching people how to deliver a moving up and stopping lessons. But we're not really actually teaching them to teach. So back then, my mind was really getting interested in things like this. Um, and... Everything was going well, but I realised then that really the AA, I'd outgrown the AA. Um, I was attending courses, etc. Their training was not much different than what I'd had. Um, you would teach a preset test, you would do role play, but there was no real science of teaching. And I was such a small fish in a big company, I couldn't really get any weight now. So I looked around for another opportunity and an opportunity appeared in 2006 with a company called Let's Drive, who were a primary and instructor training company. Now, very shortly after I joined Let's Drive, um, they became the they were bought out and took over by the instructor college. Lots of boos and hisses I can hear in the background now. But they became the instructor college and I actually worked for them from, for um, three years, all in all, solidly. Monday to Friday, nine to five instructor training. That's what I did. Um, from there, I started to develop my own plans and own systems where I thought about teaching using the skill from the DPI, using the skill from my teaching. Now, I'll be honest here, I am ashamed to say it, but we were frowned upon if we developed our own methods. Um, we really weren't designed to that. I produced forms, I produced booklets. I produced information to help people, and back then it was totally frowned upon. I won't go into detail, but it was actually removed. I was told I was not allowed to do it. Um, I couldn't quite get my head around why they didn't want to help people pass the test, um, but that's another story. During my time there, I took my cardigan from grade A, or grade, my cardigan test with the DBSA, passed with a grade A, and I also had my first entry into the audit register as an instructor trainer. It's again, I'm wonderful. I've got a lovely audit badge, etc. And still, I didn't feel that I was teaching people to teach. I was just rote teaching them lessons. The failure rate was phenomenal. Um, and if I was to increase in prep with the prep, or increase the pass rate, etc., as I say, we were running into different things. I looked more at the DIA. I'd um, by this time now, not only did I you know, as I said, I passed the Diploma in Driving Instructor and I was actually invited to actually help write the manual, um, certainly the motor vehicle section of the manual, um, vehicle technology, etc. with my background as a service engineer. And then I later on became an examiner. So I was one of the examiners or question writer and examiners with the DIP DI, which was really wonderful um, and a great time, etc., etc. 
um, become diamond and antic salmon, etc., etc., took a series of DVSA course, course, courses at the time. The DVSA were very greatly into promoting CPD for a while, and the whole systems were changing. And we did coaching, road safety, and business skills course. The key fundamental skills, which of course an ADI needed, which weren't really getting, and to some degree still aren't getting um, um, on the whole. They are offered um, by various organisations, but there you go. Taxi trainer qualification as well while I was out there. Again, I had formed systems, I was producing better training, and, but I feel like my, my hands were tied. Um, I couldn't use the systems I was writing. I, I wrote a wonderful guide to help pupils, a lesson planner, um, which the say, um, instructor college frowned upon. Um, I ended up publishing it under the guise of the MAST ADI, some people remember, and um, I, I, I had a pseudonym of the MAST ADI and I produced it because, you know, people were benefiting from this book and, and it was helping them. Um, time for me to leave, really. I looked around for a greater opportunity and found an opportunity as a director of training um, for a small school. Well, I'd say small school, they had 300 cars and I was going to be responsible for their training uh, and stuff like that, etc. getting them through the part three and training people to train people. And this was great because I was able to have carte blanche on how to be trained. Now, you know, going back then, I was initially training my six. When you take a national overall pass rate of what was probably around about 20% for part three, and I got a 90% pass rate, it was great. And I was able to then cascade all my stuff and we were turning people's pass rates around. We were phenomenally turning people. Most people were passing these part three. Most people were training it was great. I also had opportunity to carry on with DBDIA accredited fleet trainer. I became the, originally I was a secretary, then became the chairman of the GPC, General Purpose Committee of the DIA, really involved. I was really involved with everything to do with training and I was involved in many, many meetings, etc., seminars, etc. I put all this stuff together, approached, Mant uh, approached uh, Middlesex University and then uh, took on a study for, which eventually culminated in my master's degree. I took a master's degree in driver training education. I was able to write all this stuff up. Initially, I took the um, BA honours degree, but during this time, they said, you know, I'm writing stuff. I'm writing innovative, unique stuff and I should be doing the master's. So I moved up into a master's course eventually and, and then completed and passed the master's degree. Um, well, actually with a, a distinction, etc. And that was really there. I was then really teaching people lots of rescue work for part three. Part three, instructor training become my um, chosen specialist subject and the systems I use, the systems I cascaded back then and still do work, people qualify, people pass. Um, only today um, I had a conversation with a trainer who is looking for his audit qualification and he's still talking in terms of, um, you know, well, we still have to do role play sessions to teach them how to teach junctions, for example. And no, we don't. Um, we don't. We, you know, a history teacher who attends teacher training does not spend his teacher training course teaching people about 1066, about the base things in there. They, they spend their teaching trainer to side of it, teaching, learning how to teach. And, and it works really, really well. Um, 2012 saw me, um, called me, invited to join the Master Institute of Tutors and Driving. And there's many, many other organisations I belong to. Um, this takes me, as I said, this really takes me into um, my time there and to 2012. Um, where I then left um, the school I was working for then to set up what I now do on my own um, and try and help you guys more. That's the middle section really about me and how I got there. There's a massive amount of other qualifications. You can look at them if you really, really want to on my personal website, which is um, drivingschoolday.co.uk. Otherwise, um, this is me. Okay. Next section is from those years up to where we are now. <laughs>